Hello there. In this lesson, we're going to learn about two types of chemical reactions uh, called synthesis and decomposition. Uh, you've probably seen these before as uh, demonstrations in your class. Uh, when you burn magnesium and it's really bright and you don't look at it directly, uh, that's a synthesis reaction. And sometimes you can get a decomposition reaction by having an ionic compound and using uh, two electrodes to separate uh, the ions again. Um, so let's uh, dive into it. So the simplest of reactions is a synthesis reaction where you'd start with two elements or two small molecules and mash them together in order to make a compound. Uh, an example might be uh, lithium here, uh, combining with some sulfur and produce some, producing uh, the product lithium sulfide. And then of course you could balance that out and you'd have yourself a synthesis reaction. So let's look at a few compounds we can make by synthesis reaction. Uh, the first type we're gonna look at are halides, right? And so if you react uh, a metal with a halogen, you'll end up with a halide. Uh, so sodium chloride is a halide, right? And sodium chloride, you know, is a solid um, crystal. And uh, you need to balance that. So we need a two there and a two here, and then you're, you're all set. And uh, we can make another halide here if we uh, react bromine, which is a halogen as well. And you'll end up with aluminum bromide. And uh, that'll also be a crystal solid. All of your ionic compounds will be crystal solids. And then to balance that out, we need a three here and a two there and a two here. Now you notice that um, these element um, symbols for the state have also been included, uh, solid, liquid, and gas. And you can get those from your standard periodic table by the colors that they use for the elements on the table. So all the black ones here, those are all solids, which is the majority of the periodic table. Uh, you got two blue ones, you got mercury and bromine. So under standard conditions, those two would be liquid. And the last color is your gases, right? The red ones are all gases along with hydrogen. The other ones that you see on here are these hollowed out ones. And these are all synthetic elements. They're not elements that you can find in nature. You can only, uh, they've only been discovered in nuclear reactors uh, where they have um, uh, synthesized them if only for a few moments, uh, enough to uh, analyze them a little bit before they uh, decay because they're not very stable. So oxides is another type of compound that you can make by synthesis uh, with, surprise, surprise, oxygen. And you can get uh, different oxides, even with the same uh, element, because there's more than one charge for many of these elements. I don't know if you remember, but iron has a charge of plus two or it has a charge of plus three. So right now it has no charge, but those are the two options that we're going to go with here. So if it reacts under conditions that uh, give it the first charge, you're going to end up with this as your product. And if it reacts to give you the second charge, you'll end up with uh, the standard one, this guy here, which is iron uh, uh, three oxide, three oxide, but there's two of them. <laughs> uh, yeah. So then of course these will need to be balanced. Uh, you'll need a two here and a two there. And for this guy, we'll need a three and a two and a four in order to balance that. And again, you can figure out the states just by looking at the colors on the periodic table. And for ionic compounds, as long as they're dry, they'll all be solids. Nonmetals can also form oxides as well. Uh, oxygen doesn't discriminate, it'll bond with either one. Uh, so what I have here is some uh, charcoal that uh, was made in the little fire pit I have in behind my house, uh, which is mostly carbon, right? And so carbon, as we saw earlier, can make two different molecules with oxygen. You can have carbon with two oxygens and you can have carbon with one oxygen. And it sort of depends on how much ox oxygen is available as the reaction is taking place. So this one, it's already balanced. You have the same number on both sides. For the other one, we'd need to double uh, the carbon in the product as well. Alrighty, now decomposition is pretty much the opposite process from uh, what we just looked at. So if you have a halide or if you have an oxide, you can always decompose it back into its original elements, usually by adding uh, some energy in to break up those bonds. 
So this here is called electrolysis because you're using electricity here uh, to break up water into its component parts. And you'll end up with two gases at the top. Surprise, surprise. Uh, the one will be hydrogen and the other will be oxygen. And so uh, water being H2O uh, will decompose with a little electricity to give you hydrogen. Don't forget your Hofbrinkle and oxygen. Now, as far as states go, we know that water is a liquid, hydrogen is a gas, and so is oxygen. And we need to balance this. Um, so we have two oxygens on the right, so we'll need two on the left and to balance it that way. Now, a neat thing is that if you see here, you've got two hydrogens on this side and only one here, right? So the ratio is two to one. And surprise, surprise, when you look at the volume of gas that you get, you will always get two uh, parts hydrogen for every one part oxygen when you break it down. So that's pretty cool. Alrighty, so let's break down some of these halides, oxides, and molecules. Uh, good old nickel chloride, you're going to end up with nickel and chlorine gas, right? Let me give it its symbol, solids, and, uh, and we'll make sure that we balance this out. Uh, we need a three here and a two here, and that needs to be a two. Then we got copper bromide, so we're going to end up with copper and bromine. Uh, if you look on the periodic table, bromine is a liquid, and the copper there is, of course, a solid. And we're going to balance this out, so we're going to need two here and two here. Now, for our oxides, we're going to have calcium and some oxygen. Calcium is a metal, it's going to be a solid. Oxygen is a gas. And uh, we need to balance this out, so some twos to work that out. Uh, finally, we got lithium, which is also a solid metal, and oxygen, still a gas. And we need to balance this out, so we need two here, which means that needs to be a four, and that's how we'll balance that guy out. Last couple here are just here's some generic molecules. Uh, we're going to break that down into some nitrogen and some hydrogen. And to balance that out, we're going to need a two here. So we get even number here to make that three. Uh, and that should pretty much take care of that. As far as states go, both nitrogen and hydrogen are both gases. Now, uh, this last guy here, we're going to have some sulfur and some chlorine. Remember your Hofbrinkle, chlorine is also a gas. If you see on the periodic table, sulfur is a solid. And we really only need a two there to balance things out. Alrighty, hope that helped. So one thing that you'll see with almost all decomposition reactions is that they're always going to need some help in order for the reaction to occur. Because oftentimes it involves breaking apart bonds uh, that were formed in the synthesis part of the reaction. And to get it to go back to its elements, you're going to need to break those apart. So usually that means some electricity, like in our example with the water, or some heat, like in the picture to the right there. Um, that will help these reactions along uh, in order to break those bonds. The other option is to use something that's called a catalyst. Catalyst is a substance that lowers the amount of energy that's needed for a reaction to occur. Uh, the mechanism for that we can worry about another time, but basically what it does is it reduces the amount of energy needed so that the reaction can go with the amount of energy that's present. So just to finish off, let's do a few more before we leave here. Uh, this is going to be a decomposition reaction because there's only one reactant. And we're going to end up with some lithium and some chlorine. And if we're going to balance that out, we know we're going to need a two here and a two here. The lithium's a solid, the chlorine is a gas. Now we got two elements here. We're going to combine those. We're going to make magnesium oxide. If you look at the charges, you'll only need one of each. Now, magnesium oxide is an ionic compound, and uh, we know that all of our ionic compounds are going to be solids. Now, let's uh, balance these out. A two here and a two here. Very good. Now, balancing out this guy, this is nitrogen triiodide. We're going to end up with some nitrogen and some iodine. Uh, if you look on the periodic table, nitrogen's red, which means it's a gas under standard conditions, and iodine is black, which means it's a solid. And uh, balance these out, we're going to need a three here and a two here, and that pretty much does it. Now we've got two elements here. we got nickel with bromine, uh, and there are two options because nickel is one of those elements that is multivalent. Nickel can be plus two or nickel can be plus three. So one option will be nickel 
with uh, two bromines. And the other option will be nickel with three bromines. And of course, the balance for each of those will be different. Uh, for the first one, um, looks like we don't need any balance at all. For the second one, we'll put the reactants down here. Um, and uh, we know that we have three bromines. We're going to use three over here and a two over here. And then we're going to need two nickels in order to balance that out. As far as states go, all of our ionic compounds, we're just going to call solids. We don't see any water around, so we don't have to worry about them dissolving. All right, hope that helps you get some practice, and we'll see you soon.